Good day, good day to you. So today is Thursday, it is surgery day. And I don't have to be there till two o'clock. My surgery does not start until three, but I'm just getting up and it's, I, I, I don't know. I didn't sleep well last night. And for what? I didn't sleep well because, why well, I had not sleep well. I went to sleep, I stayed up too late the night before. So I went to sleep early. I'm trying to think. So then I woke back up and I went back to sleep. And I don't know, I just my sleep has just been off so bad. So I dreamt that I was having my surgery. I went, girl, I jumped that. I went in the back room to go have my surgery. My husband does this. He'll line the pillows up along the back of the chair when he's lying on the chair for whatever reason because I guess he know I don't want him on my pillows but so I had a dream girl that I went to to have my surgery and they wheeled me into the back room and it was a whole it was like a room full of people having surgery like every the whole room was full and there was people with black sheets on it like black covers not necessarily sheets on them and they was like, don't worry, the lady next to you is dead, but don't worry, we do this all the time. We have all these, we have all these, um, what did they say? We have all these surgeries going. It's a, what did they say? Oh my God. It was something that they were doing now that they perform like numerous surgeries at one time, but it was so many people in that room. And I was like, and I'm laying there and I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm so scared because I've never seen anything like this. All these people in this room about to have surgery. I mean, like having surgeries at different times. And so this, they turned the covers back on the lady that was beside me. Her eyes open. So I thought she was dead, but she got up. She was like, I'm about to go to have the surgery where they do the more rapid surgeries. And I was like... <laughs> I'm like, more rapid surgeries? What do you mean, more rapid surgeries? Like, this is a quick... I mean, I'm looking around like, if if, if you go on where they're doing the surgeries faster than this, then I'm really nervous. I woke up. Girl, my heart was beating so fast. They was about to put me to sleep. I woke up. My heart was beating so fast. I was like, oh, my God. Girl, so... I was up for a while, but me and my husband stayed up like three o'clock laughing, talking. We were laughing, talking, having a good time. Just just laughing and talking. So um I'm stuffy this morning because he turned the heat up last night because you know he's cold. He's on blood theories, he's cold. And I can't take a lot of heat. And sometimes the heat, I'll wake up. My nose is stuffy, my head is hurty. And that's kind of how I woke up this morning. And I'll get okay, you know, I think a little bit, but that's how I woke up. So it is a dream because that dream was crazy. So when I woke up, my heart was beating so fast. I was so scared. <laughs> and I got up out of the bed with him and went and got in one of the, the spare bedrooms. And that room is smaller. And it really does just mess me up so bad. Like I'm worse off. Like it'll, it'll fix out after a while, but girl. Oh, so about to hop in the shower in a little bit and um, get my day started, I guess. Uh, I am so hungry, but you know how it is you, when you can't eat, you want to eat. And I'm used to having my coffee, and so I can't have my coffee. I can't have anything. So I, could, I had to stop eating and drinking at 10 o'clock last night and couldn't have anything up. Like I said... My well, surgery is at three o'clock, so when I wake up, I'm probably gonna be ready to eat. I guess you know when you first wake up. Sometimes you be so groggy and stuff, but I think sometimes they tell you to be careful what you eat. But I want some breakfast food for some re for some reason. I want some bacon. <laughs> to go back into the room 
got my Ivy in, prepped, ready to go. I am hungry. <laughs> I am hungry though, for real. Oh, I am. So I'm waiting going to the operating room. The little procedure room they got, rather. Am I scared? No. I am hungry. My mouth is so dry. I am so thirsty. But I will check with you when I come out. I'll be out shortly. It don't take long. My neck is hurt. My blood pressure is high. Um, one is, yeah, it's high. But they said it should come down during the anesthesia. So, my mouth is dry as crap. So, help, hopefully, this IV, IV will help to rehydrate me because I am, oh, that might be something my headache too. But anyway, girl, I will check back when I'm done. Good morning. Your girl is upright. Thank you, Jesus. Everything went well yesterday. I could not come back to give you an update because I was out of it. <laughs> I was pretty much out of it. Um, I had a lot of pain when I first woke up, but they gave me a lot of heavy dose medication through my IV. And I did pretty good last night. I did have to take a half of a pill last night, you know, just for the cramping and stuff. But um, today so far I'm feeling good. It is like 10 o'clock. I have an appointment to get my ends trimmed and probably color my edges. So yeah, I'm on my way out the door, but thank God yesterday went really well. I am so pleased. I will have to tell you about the experience. Let me tell you something. I have like the best doctors, the best, um, what you call them? It was the best uh, anesthesiologist. They were absolutely wonderful, like just wonderful, really. And I thank God because they just did a fantastic job and I was just so pleased with them. Like, oh, I couldn't be more pleased, really. So yeah, I'm about to head out and it's chilly out here today and I love it. I ordered a Bath and Body Works aromatherapy haul i mean not haul child because i ordered the products of aromatherapy stuff today oh good lord because i don't feel like going in the store i'm in my son's car again because he has my car and um he's got to whew. oh my god it's cold in here so yeah he has oh Turn this thing down, child. I tell you, when you get in somebody else's car, trying to figure out somebody else's car. Oh, child. That little air blowing is cold, too. In my face. But anyway, whew, I'm going back to my home, girl. Um, because I don't want my ends trimmed. And I mean, I, I want my ends trimmed, but I don't want my hair flat earned. And the beautician that I go to on a regular, you know, was going to on a regular basis, she only does it if she, she only trims my end if she give me a silk press and I do not want to silk All press. All sets, let's go. Um, Turn right on Cornwallis Road. Yeah, I don't want a silk press. So with that being said, I'm gonna go to old girl where she could just do a blow dry and give me my ends trim. So yeah, let me get on down the road and I will check back in with you later. She's back. I'm back from getting my colors, my edges colored and I still got like a little, you know, color on my scalp, but it's okay because it'll wash off in a few days or whatever. But I had done these big old twists. My hair is so thick though that it is, let me let you see it, girl. Whew. The stuff is thick, honey, so I couldn't. <laughs> I could have finished it back there, but I think I'm gonna go ahead. Oh no, I might. I think I'm gonna go ahead and twist it up though, like into small twists. And I'm just chilling today. I didn't want to do anything today, but just relax. Um, and that's about it, girl. I'm about to. I'm trying to decide how I want to do my hair. If I want to do it like this, but it's so thick. Or do I want to just do it in a smaller twist and 
plan to stay for a few days because I don't plan on doing anything this weekend. Oh, yeah, right, Ray is on this loud, right? Let me turn this down. I'm probably going to get bit red later on today. And uh, that's about it. I don't have no plans for this weekend, girl. I'm going to chill. But um, I'm going to let you see my hair. My hair is, it is really thick. It might not look like it, but it is. So I just got my ends trimmed and got my edges colored, girl. And uh, yeah, my hair feels so much better. It really does feel so much better. So yeah, I'm about to actually do something to it. I don't know what. To be honest, girl, I don't know, girl. I really don't know. She massaged my scalp. It felt so good. She just took her hands and just, I was like, oh, girl, I could go to sleep. Which I can go to sleep now, to be honest. But I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this dude, though. What I'm going to do with this dude. This dude, this dude, this dude. My hair is longer on this side. But it's also looser on this side. A looser texture than the other side. Didn't get no flat iron today. I just wanted blow dry, no flat iron at all. And uh, that's about it. Well, girl, it has been a great day. I just wanted to come on real quick. And see, I just did my hair, some big old flat twists. I wanted to come on real quick and talk about my experience yesterday. So, um, because... So I went in, they went in to cut some polyps, excuse me, out of my uterine line. And they did a DNC on my cervix and a uterus or whatever to scrape some endometrius cells. And they will be sending everything to pathology. But she did say that she's anticipating it coming back benign. So I ain't worried about that though at all. But let me tell you about my experience. So I get there, which they ran like 45, they were running like 45 minutes late. Uh, they did a surgery that it took longer than what they expected. So I get there and everything. I wait, but they are so apologetic that it's, you know, taking so long. So the REN kept coming in. And she was just, you know, like talking to me and said she was sorry she was like i promise i'm gonna get you back as soon as i can i'm like okay yeah, that's fine no problem so i elected to have it at the office they have like a little procedure room where they do procedures and stuff at certain days of the month there and i decided to have it at the office because for one it was less expensive than going to the actual hospital and my doctor is really good. She do those procedures all the time. They had an anesthesiologist there and they really were just on point. Oh my God. Let me tell you though, that is probably one of the best experiences I have ever, ever had at a doctor's office. So when I get back there and everything, the nurse um, that was checking me in, you know, they ask you all these health questions and stuff like that. So she asked me about depression. So I told her I did suffer from a little bit of depression last year, you know, when my son passed. And so she just started apologizing because, you know, you have to let them know if you're on certain meds and stuff like that. So to let her know, which this, my gynecologist is also in the same um, building as my um, medical doctor, my, um, what do you call it? Primary care doctor, physician. So, you know, of course, they talk back and forth to each other and stuff like that. But um, so the anesthesiologist nurse, they ask you all these long questions before they do and, you know, stuff. So when I was telling her about my son, she stopped and she just put her pen down, her um, iPad down, placed her hand on top of her iPad. And she offered so much empathy that I was just like, oh, my God, I was carried away at the empathy. And I was like, wow, because... You don't get that. You know, a lot of times if you have to tell people that they say, oh, I'm sorry. And they keep on going. She stopped, paused, put everything on pause. And she was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to hear that. She was like, well, you know, for you to have gone through that last year, you are definitely holding. I would never have guessed it had you not told me because it does not show on you at all. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. No. So we were talking and everything. So she went out and she came back and she was like, if you don't mind me asking me, I asked how your son passed. So I told her and, you know, we just got to talk and stuff. And she was like, you know, um, 
you will be such of an inspiration to other mothers like you that suffered through that parents and we just was talking and this lady now she didn't know me she was like an rn for the anesthesiologist like that you know assist and stuff but that lady just i mean so we went on and talked she was like you know i'm gonna be praying for you and just it was just how she acted just you know whether she does not the ladies her whole everything was just so impressive so then the anesthesiologist the one that was actually going to be doing give me the meds come in girl that man was the bomb he was probably he's older he's definitely older a lot older a lot of gray hair real older but you could tell he'd been you know in in the, doing it for a long time so he was like um so he was talking he was looking at my chart and everything that man girl he was just awesome if there's anything i can do for you you know we're here to service you we appreciate you um inviting us here we're only here by invitation you know i mean he just was like i was like oh my god and he was like you know um if there's anything that you need any questions feel free to ask me i mean it was just i'm here to service you this is how this man was doing i'm here to service you and i was like oh my god he made me feel so so comfortable he told me what he was going to give me how it's going to make me feel just i mean he just went down the whole little thing and i was like yes i was i tell my girlfriend about it today and she starts crying and i was like are you okay she was like yes yeah, just the level of care because she's works in the medical field as well she works with hospice and she was like, you just don't know, Renee. A lot of times we don't hear those kind of things. So I need to find a way to contact them to just, and of course I can do it with my gynecologist, but that was an outside um, anesthesiologist, but I'm going to figure out where they go. Well, I have their paperwork and stuff, but I want to give them a kudos, maybe send them some lunch or something, girl. I don't know. So I'll go into the little room. It's like a real sterile room that they have in there where they perform these procedures. It's a bed, you lay down on the bed. And you instead of putting your feet up in the stirrup things, they have these things that you put your legs in. You slide down to the end of the bed. You have to slide your bottom all the way down. They had this relaxing music playing. It was like a white noise in there. I mean, it was just so relaxing, girl. Oh, my God. It was like, but at first, it was like all these people coming at me. So I had... One a lady on each leg, and one another one in the middle of the doctor in the middle saying slide down. Then I had the nurse on the side of me over here. Then I had the anesthesiologist up above me, and I'm just like <laughs> I'm sitting there like you know just looking there. And it was like we know it's a lot, you know, a lot of people coming at you at one time. Are you okay? Are you comfortable? You know, they were just talking and stuff, and I think that's the happy coming in, and I was just carried away. So they tell me. So my hand was hurting so bad. I was like, oh my God, my hand, my hand, my hand. Because, hey, because it was a lot of, like my hand was hurting because they could not find a vein in my arm to go in for the IV. So they had to put it in my hand. I showed it in the video. So they had to put it in my hand. My hand was hurting. It was like, hey, I'm like, oh my hand, my hand, my hand. So the entities, I was, he got up, he was like, I know. So he grabbed my hand and he, not, you know, hard, but he took it and wrapped it up like in a sheet and stuff and put it like right up onto me, put it up onto me, wrapped it up in the sheet. He said, I know it hurts, but in just a few minutes, you won't. And that was all I remember. I didn't hear anything else. That was all I heard. And I was like, dang, next thing I know, I woke up and they were telling me, trying to wake me up. Why is that the best sleep in the world? Like, that is the best sleep sleep that you just don't even want to wake up from. And I remember hearing them say, Teresa, wake up, Teresa, Teresa, Teresa. Girl, by the time I woke up, they had my aunt, they had my panties on, my pants, my shoes. If they had fully dressed me by the time. <laughs> they, I was like, I didn't know they were gonna dress me. Because I undressed myself. I know she was like, the nurse was like, yeah, I'm going to help you once it's over and everything, get dressed and stuff. They dressed me. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, they actually dressed me. And it was so funny because I'm like, okay. So I was sitting there and I was starting to cramp, you know, cramping a lot. And I was sitting, there, I was like, oh, I'm hurting. Girl, she had a long A needle. She was like, oh, don't worry. I'm about to knock all that pain out in a few minutes. That was it, nurse. 
<laughs> and I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, oh, it hurts so bad. And she was like, I know, don't worry. Just give me a second, give me a second. Girl, this I know she put up, uh, she gave, she was like, I'm about to, trust me, you won't feel no pain. So I was sitting there and a little bit, she was like, how do you feel now? How do you feel now? And I was, you know, a little bit later. And I was like, okay, it's coming down. It's calming down. But so last night, I think I already updated you on last night, but I just want to update you on the actual procedure. It was because my doctors and anesthesiologists just made it so, I was just like, this is the best experience ever. Like they just made me feel so good. It was, it was awesome. And I'm definitely going to write a letter um, because it's just amazing. It is. It, it was an amazing experience. It was. And I just kept telling them, y'all are so good. Oh my God. Y'all are just awesome. You're great. Thank you. And I was just so appreciative and stuff. And they were like, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's our pleasure. When I hear somebody say it's my pleasure, I just be like, oh, wow, I love it. And then my doctor came in and she was just telling me, you know, what she found and little stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, just, you know, it was just a great experience. And I just want to tell you what my experience was like. And hopefully yours will be the same. Make sure you thank people when they go out of their way. Yes, they're getting paid. It's not free. But they just went way out of their way, above and beyond. And I am just so grateful to have had um, doctors and nurses around me that really just care. Because I... You know my story. Just been going through a lot, you know, a lot in the last year. And sometimes people don't know. People just don't know how you, how sometimes your action make other people feel and don't have anything to do with the process. So let's say their generosity and their care really just made me feel so good and so warm not just because of that experience but because of the experience you know what i've been through in the last year year and a half so yeah but i just want to share my experience with you and hopefully if you have you know to go through anything you will have some dynamite you know anesthesiologists doctors in general that will show you that care because it really does make a difference and if you work in the medical field hey Thank you, because, hey, you guys, you're awesome. You really are. <laughs>